the teachable moments or skills that you can help kids with when they're having issues with sibling rivalry are emotional control, respect for and maintenance of boundaries, problem solving, meeting the needs for belonging, taking responsibility for your own boredom and entertainment, and learning to share. So one of the first skills we're going to talk about that are teachable when you're dealing with issues of sibling rivalry is teaching emotional control. What I don't want you to do is try to negate or uh, manage their feelings. If you're always trying to manage their feelings for them, they're always going to think that their feelings are your fault and they're going to be upset with you when they don't feel right. Um, if you tell them it's nothing to be upset about, they're just going to escalate it because clearly you're not getting it. What you can do is reflect and downshift a little bit. Uh, like this morning when you guys were trying to get the toys out of that machine, and that claw would drop down and it would almost pick up a toy, but then it would drop it, and you each had six quarters, and you didn't get one, and you came over to the table where we were having breakfast, and I could tell you were really sad. And I said, you're disappointed that you didn't get the toy this time. And you kind of blinked and didn't say anything because I think it was too hard to talk. And can you remember what I said about uh, things that you could say to yourself, how you could use your self-talk? Mm-hmm. What did I say? You said that there's a, that's just a little part of our day and we're gonna have a really good day today. It's a little part of our day. We're going to have a really good day today. What else did I say? That after we're done with this video here, we're going to go downstairs and have a big lunch with some friends at Gumbo's. And then we'll probably go out on the square to the carnival and we'll get some ice cream at the coffee shop. And then we'll probably go to a park and then you're going to have a camp out and make s'mores in our backyard on the river. And that it's a really great day and, and you don't always get what you want. So don't try to uh, protect them from disappointments either. That just happens. Did that happen to you too? Mm-hmm. And how did you deal with that? Um, I don't really, really remember how I dealt with it. Did you get really mad? You did? You did? Yeah. I didn't realize you were that mad. You didn't, you didn't uh, jump around or scream. So when you're teaching children about emotional control, first of all, you need to help them with an emotional vocabulary. You can teach them a variety of words. You can teach them that there are different degrees of, uh, say, frustration, for example. You can be annoyed, mad, angry, furious. Um, help them develop an awareness of what it feels like in their body, how their body tells them when they're getting upset. You can assist them in creating a menu of coping strategies. You can give them uh, lots of different tools for managing difficult feelings and making, making them feel better. There's, uh, there's thinking tools, like that's not a big problem, it's a little problem. There's uh, activity tools, you can go do something that is fun until you feel better. There's relaxation tools like a hot bath or deep breathing or meditation. Um, there's social tools, you can talk to somebody that you trust, and then there's inappropriate tools. Inappropriate tools would be things that you may do sometimes when you get upset, but they don't fix the problem or they make it worse or, uh, or they end up getting you in trouble. We can teach them to match the reaction to the size of a problem. We can talk about some small problems, medium problems, and really big problems, and talk about what would be a reaction that would go with that size of a problem and help them uh, match those up and help them get the right uh, perspective on a problem. You can do what I call is the, uh, the preemptive strike. You can notice them starting to get upset and you can say, whoa, 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 I see you've got your fist pack back and you're really mad at your brother, but right now you are letting yourself be mad without hurting. And I really appreciate the way that you can do that. I really appreciate what a gentle, sweet, patient big brother you are because right now you're letting yourself be mad without hurting. And if you can keep that up until we go back to lunch, then we'll have you know, some cookies for you then or, or something like that. And then finally, I would have you model what you say. <laughs> if you're telling them not to holler when they get mad, but you're hollering when you get mad, they're gonna pay a lot more attention to what you do than what you say.